And it all started with a dream. I don't know how well you are connected to the story of the CNMA, but I really love the story of Albert Benjamin Simpson and the dream he once had and he dreamt uh, of Chinese people he wanted to reach for the gospel, for Christ. And he, he, he felt himself called for missions, but was never able to uh, be on the mission field himself. Yes, he visited mission fields and yes, he prepared people for mission, but uh, that great dream that he had never uh, came to be within his own life. And that's something he had to cope with. Um, and it's really a privilege to talk a lot to a lot of missionaries today who have been sent and have that dream fulfilled uh, of which Albert Simpson dreamt. And I want to start with a, with the first text where this dream came from. And this dream might connect to most of us, as it did with me. And it's a dream which John had in Revelation 7. And it's a vision of the end. Uh, and he says in verse 9, after this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And it's such a privilege to see all you people from all kinds of backgrounds, from all colors, from all languages, different tribes, uniting together for the gospel to bring people before the throne of the Lamb. This is the dream God has, and this is the dream which with um, Albert Simpson connected in his life. And he felt that as a burden, a burden to reach the world for Christ. So I have to switch my screen to there, otherwise I can't see. And he went to the city of New York, uh, in which he uh, thought he would better reach the world for Christ because uh, it had a great harbor and there were a lot of missions uh, organizations uh, connecting with each other there so he hoped to uh, to dive into that and to reach his world for Christ when he uh, accepted a call to New York City and he came to there to uh, to the Presbyterian Church in the 13th street and he started a street mission to reach the immigrants uh, who came to the shores of New York City. And he saw the poverty, he saw uh, uh, the, 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 the people being stricken by uh, the dreams they had, which exploded because it wasn't as well as they hoped, as you can see on these pictures. Just a sec for you to be able to see the pictures uh, of the of the carts with people uh, with all their belongings and stuff looking for a place to call home. This is in the time uh, Albert Simpson came to New York City. And this is a picture of, uh, of a family in uh, Ellis Island, the immigration island where people came when they came from Europe or other places in the world and had to go to a sanitation time, uh, a quarantine of, of uh, I, th I think 14 days before they could enter the city. And this is how the boats looked when they came to the shores of the US in that time. And Simpson, uh, on his first service, uh, he just arrived a day earlier in New York, um, spoke, of uh, Acts 1 verse 8 and I think it's a, a, a verse you well know but there's a, a twist in it as uh, there is in a lot of his teachings and, and it's something which really inspires me to this day. I'll read it for uh, to you and then share what, uh, what, what Simpson uh, taught about it. I have to move this one, yeah. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Simpson came to New York City, he was a church man, a serving, a serving in a church, but he wanted to reach 
the neglected peoples of New York City, people uh, who were not usually in a church like the immigrants, but also other people who came by the scores to that big city. Uh, in the year in which he came, um, 170,000 people entered the city of New York City. And there were no new church initiative, initiatives in the past year. And this disturbed him. And when he looked at the city, he, he said for, of, of Acts 1 verse 8, Jerusalem is the place where the church already is. And Judea are people who are in some way or another connected to the church. But Samaria and the Samarians are people like the, like the immigrants, like the Italian immigrants he wanted to reach. So we went to, um, uh, to the poor uh, areas of the city, Little Italy nowadays, and he started a street mission to reach these people for Christ because he wanted to reach them for Christ. And also in New York City, he worked on a magazine uh, to get the mission fields, the faraway mission fields on the hearts of the people of the church, because uh, there were a lot of unreached people groups and Simpson was already targeting them. And this is what he came to be known for. But dreams do break boundaries, as I've said, he started reaching out to Italian immigrants in his well-to-do 13th Street Presbyterian Church, and he thought he had an agreement of uh, reaching their city and reaching their world for Christ, but it was a little different for them. Uh, they said they wanted to, but when Simpson reached over 100 Italian immigrants and invited them to church, um, that became a problem because he wanted to baptize them and invite them for membership of the church, but the church rejected them. And that really broke his heart. And his heart, uh, you can see in this quote, a church that wants the poor, misses them, seeks them, will always find them, feed them and be filled with them. But that does give challenges and challenges arose in the time of Simpson and he wanted to reach them but he broke out on his own to start it re to, to start reaching more and more people and this is where the Christian and Missionary Alliance actually starts it starts in the gospel tabernacle when Simpson starts a church in a really poor area of the city in Hell's Kitchen which was at the time one of the uh, poorest and baddest places to be. It was a little like Whitechapel in London, where Jack the Ripper in the same time approximately uh, wandered. And uh, there, was a lot, there were a lot of people who had no jobs. There were a lot of people who had nothing uh, to eat. And he started street missions. He started rescue missions. He started healing missions mm -hmm. and a house for healing, a house of blessing, Baraja. And dreams do break boundaries, not only in the time of Simpson, but I think in our time as well. And we, when we were in New York City, we got a question at the Young Scholar Program where we were asked to look at our churches with the question, have our churches become maybe the churches Simpson left. Do we have the same heart for the poor and the neglected people of our neighborhoods, of our cities, and of the world? Do we really feel called to connect with these people? And do, do we really, really want to break boundaries? like he did, is the life of Christ so filling us that we dare to dream and dare to go, like he did? And it's a question that, that hit hard. 
I'm not going to answer it for you now, but, but <laughs> I want you to, <laughs> to think it through for yourselves. Another picture of New York in these days. There was another thing in, on which he has been working from the start. And we will dive in that in the second session a little bit more. But uh, another key text which plays a major role in his understanding is the Great Commission in Matthew 28. And I think you all know this, the, 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 this text, but it's good to read it again and to think it through and to pray it through in the next couple of days. I'll read it for you. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Notice that Jesus says to his disciples that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. He's the one who works the deeper life in us, in us and commissions us for mission. And it's his mission. And there's a connection with reaching people and shaping them, forming them, formation. And Simpson has always seen... Um, the people of God, not only the ministers, but especially the people of God who are the tools for the mission of God. So we need to make disciples of all of these people we reach, and we need to invest in them. We need to shape them, and we need to form them for mission, because it's Christ working in and through us and mobilizing every disciple for his mission. And sure, baptizing is part of that. But it's more than just a baptism uh, saying bye to the past and walking into new life. No, it's a baptism into life because it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are baptized into his life. Mm. And with that comes... <clears throat> The command to be teaching people to obey. And that might be a hard word for today, especially in my country, but I suggest in a whole lot of countries. We don't want people to command us. We don't want to obey. That's, that's difficult. But Simpson made work of this. This is part of what he started. And after he started reaching people in New York City through the Gospel Tabernacle, he made work of an, a missionary training institute because there, was a, there were a lot of people who wanted to go, but were not equipped or qualified enough. So he started a, a kind of a Bible school, which was the missionary training institute, which later became NIAC. And NIAC uh, prepared people and especially irregulars were the people he sought for people who were forgotten and didn't fit in the 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 the, the, the natural blend of the workers uh, who were sent out or uh, who were qualified for uh, serving the church no simpson wanted to mobilize every disciple and send them out and and just after starting the the missionary training institute he sent the first team to Congo. Wasn't a great success, but after that, many missionaries followed. It was a continuing, uh, continuing preparation of people for the mission of Christ and sending them out and connecting them to the life of Christ. The last verse, I am with you. There where you go, always to the very end of this age. This is not possible without deeper life. Deeper life is all about the all-sufficiency of Christ working in and through his people. 
uh, and being the big missionary in and through them, reaching out all over the world. This is what I said. Shaping and sending of people, the Missionary Training Institute sought to find God's call. The irregulars and equip them for ministry to the neglected peoples at home and abroad, to regions beyond. This is our DNA. And you see here Simpson Hall on the picture. And uh, I was privileged to be sleeping there with the Alliance uh, Young Scholar Program. And uh, I had a better room than the first missionaries ha uh, had, but it was really, really a privilege to be there and, and to think through what Simpson had in mind and the great vision he had to reach the world and how he brought people together to work together for the mission of Christ in the world. And this is, this is something, this is something of that. And, and all over the world, you see the same things. We've been investing in the past more than hundred years in equipping people and sending them out. This is who we are. And a lot of them are irregulars like I am. <laughs> That's what I like about this movement. <laughs> For the people that know me, uh, <laughs> they, will, they, will, they will say yes to that. But we'll, we'll get to know each other later on. <laughs> Another text, key text, which plays a major role in this understanding, uh, also, also from missionary perspective, is Matthew 24, 14. And it's actually about eschatology. But... Simpson sees his world and his eschatology, his theology through the lens of missiology. And, and, and this is actually a quote he used uh, against an, uh, a reporter from a newspaper who asked him, uh, Dr. Simpson, do you know when Christ will return? And he said, yes, but you have to write it down and print it every word. And this is what he responded with. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And sure, the reporter was obliged to print that, so he put it in print. <laughs> it's a great story, but um, this is the way Simpson looked at it. He wanted to bring Christ back, the imminent return of Christ, and that's why they were mobilizing people for missions, because the time was short. Uh, and especially if you if you dive into the history of, of, of the time he lived in, it was a tenacious time. But he was able to mobilize a lot of people for uh, to reach peoples who were not yet reached. There were stories of people going uh, to the Middle East and, and traveled by camel uh, to preach the gospel. The early stories of the missionaries that were sent out were really heroes. And... I hope you, you're aware of, 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 of the fact that you are, just as I am, a recipient of that, of this call of God put on the people of God. And as an effect of that, people were sent out and reached peoples and shaped those people and sent them out again. It's a continual, continuing thing. Uh, and we are part of that. It doesn't stop with Simpson. If you just look at all the participants, there are a lot of them. And from all backgrounds, from all kinds of churches, from all colors, from all languages. And I think he would be glad and thank God if he could have seen this. And now I want to go to the reflection time in the breakout groups. And... Um, we have some questions to discuss. And these are these. What does deeper life and missions mean in our context and why? Think of that in the next uh, half an hour, I think. I'm not sure. Am I OK, Owen? No, that is uh, exactly right. Uh... Well, I'll just uh, explain. I've uh, put the uh, the question that's being asked there into the chat. Yeah. And uh, so 